Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if we had a tool in our Helix that we could use to pretty much effortlessly and very quickly improve any preset that we were working on. For anybody who follows my channel, you'll know that I'm a big fan of using the Shelf EQ. A little background to why we have a Shelf EQ in the Helix is I did a video a number of years ago using kind of a, a crazy system of a split crossover path with two gain blocks to create a makeshift Shelf EQ because there just wasn't one in there. And the folks at Line 6 saw this and went, wait a second, we don't have a Shelf EQ in there? And the next software update we did. And a few tweaks were made to that and I'm super happy with that block and it works really well and a lot of folks have contacted me and told me that they're so happy when they use that it really improves their presets. Now while the shelf EQ gives us more fine tuning ability such as setting the low and high shelf frequencies to different places if we so desire controlling them independently that same flexibility sometimes confuses some folks and they don't know what settings to make and while the shelf EQ is a pretty simple EQ to set up for somebody with no experience with EQ EQ, they may still struggle to use it in a way that is improving their presets. But we do actually have a different tool along those same lines, but even further simplified. And this tool was introduced at the same time as the Shelf EQ in the Helix, and that is the Tilt EQ. I've done a video about this before, but I wanted to do kind of a more quick, concise video, because I think that this can be a really important tool for a lot of folks to use to really improve any Helix preset very quickly on the fly with almost no effort at all. So let's dive in and take a look and see what we can do with this. So here we are over at HX Edit. I have a very simple little preset here with a tiny little bit of reverb at the end, courtesy of the dynamic room block. And I've pulled up a Placator Dirty, put a 412 Greenback 25 on it with a 121 ribbon pulled back four and a half inches and the standard default low and high cut settings that come up on that cab. I actually didn't touch any of these settings, this is the way the Placator Dirty comes up stock uh, default settings, except I believe I turned off the C45. I've never really been a fan of that on. These EQ blocks are not engaged right now. You'll notice I have a snapshot up here that says no EQ. This little preset sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, not a bad little tone. It does need a little bit of tweaking in my opinion if we wanted that to kind of be so-called mix or live ready. But that's what we're gonna try to do without any other finagling other than adding these EQs in. What you'll notice is I have some snapshots set up. I have one that says no EQ, which is the one you just heard. <laughs> which is just that placator dirty with those stock settings. Now, I also have another snapshot that says tilt 650, shelf, tilt 400 and tilt 1K. Now, you might be wondering what that is. Well, the shelf EQ is gonna have these particular settings and we'll come over and engage that on the shelf snapshot. You'll notice the tilt EQ stays disengaged. And on these other tilt snapshots, the tilt is engaged and the shelf is disengaged, just so we're, aware of what's going on. So a starting point that I oftentimes use with the shelf EQ is low frequency and high frequency, both set to 650 Hertz. And I'll pull back minus two dB on the low gain and boost two dB on the high gain. Now here's my thought process on that. Some of the frequencies below 650, maybe down in the 400, 450 Hertz range is kind of where some mud lives, right? Uh, and Anything below that is where kind of the thickness of the sound, the low end lives. And sometimes that can get in the way of things like bass guitar and kick drums. So I find that a lot of times just by pulling that back by one or two dB, it cleans up some of that mud, cleans out a little bit of the sonic space in the low end. We still have a great guitar tone, but it's gonna sit nicer in a mix either live or in the studio. Now, my thought process on the high gain is that at 650 hertz above that in the 900, 800 hertz, you get a little bit of nice fullness and almost creaminess to the guitar tone, which is really nice. And then the frequencies above that can help it to cut. So just listening to the no EQ version that you heard and then going to that little shelf EQ, this is what it sounds like when we engage that. It's not going to be as dramatic as some people think, but I think it just polishes the sound and makes it more shall we say, mix ready. Now, 
Now, somebody just sitting by themselves in their room might actually prefer the no EQ. They may get that bottom end that they really like. And that's fine. And if you like that, that's great. But when you get into a mix, that might become a little bit of a problem and that might have to be changed. So something like the shelf EQ might just clean that up for us. So really nice, I like that and it's great, but some folks may still find that kind of difficult because they don't maybe know which frequencies to set. And while I like these default settings, maybe somebody else wouldn't be so happy with them. And obviously we can change them. Enter the tilt EQ. So if we come into the tilt EQ and center a frequency at 650 hertz, that's gonna be very similar to the settings I have over here on the shelf EQ, where I have both settings at 650. I'm boosting all the frequencies above 650 by 2 dB, and I'm cutting all the frequencies below 650 by minus 2 dB, and it's a shelf because it does all of those frequencies boosts and cuts equally. So the tilt EQ is gonna work around the same premise, but it's gonna have a center point. They call it the center frequency. And then we can either tilt it. So when it tilts, it's going to bring down the lower frequencies while raising the upper frequencies around that center frequency point. Or if we go the other way to the darker side of things, it's going to bring up our lower frequencies below our center point and bring down our higher frequencies that are above it. So really interesting stuff. So in a way, it kind of works the same way as a shelf, sort of, kind of, but it's more of a tilt, thus the name Tilt EQ, right? So can we get similar results? Well, I set up a little preset here called Tilt 650, where we had it set at the same kind of center frequency as we had on the shelf EQ. And I put it at bright 45. And I found that that sort of kind of mimics this setting on the shelf EQ. So let's take a listen to this versus the no EQ setting, first of all. So here's no EQ. <laughs> So you see, much in the same way the shelf did, it really cleaned up. That low end gave it a little more brightness and cleaned up some of that mud. Now, how does that compare to the shelf EQ? And as always, watch up here when the snapshots change. Right when we go back to no EQ, you hear that big bottom end and the muddiness. So while the tilt and the shelf are not going to be identical, they kind of sort of do a very similar thing at those settings. Now, obviously it's not always going to be used in that manner. What if we were to come over to our amp here and let's say, instead of using a 121 ribbon, we just pulled over a 57 dynamic one inch back. Now that's gonna brighten this tone up considerably, make it a little bit harsher. <laughs> Now, if I found that too bright, I could always come over to the Tilt EQ and say, you know, I'm gonna darken this up instead of brighten it up. So there's a no EQ. So it doesn't always have to be used to brighten things up. Maybe this wasn't the best example because it wasn't an overly harsh sound to begin with, but it really can be used in either fashion. Now, if we were, let's say on a ribbon mic, like the 4038 ribbon at an inch back, this is gonna be big and tubby and muddy. <laughs> We could go back to our Tilt EQ setting here, obviously not darkening it, and we could maybe be very aggressive with it. Let's listen to the difference here. Compared to no EQ.
What I like about that is we've still retained the really nice qualities of that 4038 ribbon mic, but we've cleaned it up and made it much more usable for a mix ready sound, either live or in the studio. just with a couple simple settings. Now coming back over here to our original settings, which I believe I had the 121 ribbon around four and a half inches back. And on the Tilt EQ, I was around bright 45. What happens if we change the setting on the Tilt EQ's center frequency? So the Tilt 400, I have it now set for those same settings, but bringing that Tilt down to 400 where those muddy frequencies live. And I have another snapshot set up to center that frequency at one kilohertz where we maybe don't get into those 800, 900 hertz frequencies that I kind of like sometimes on the electric guitar. So let's take a listen to how this changes and we move that center frequency around. Again, we'll start with no EQ and then I'll snapshot through the three different settings on the tilt EQ from 650 to 400 to 1K. Starting with no EQ and again, keep your eye up here on the snapshot. <laughs> So we really see there's subtle differences, but very useful differences that is really going to help a preset potentially sit in a mix much better and make us much happier as a player with the way our tone is sitting, whether we're performing live or playing in the studio. So where we should set those particular settings is really gonna be a matter of personal preference. I wanted to throw out some of the settings today to sort of show how I use it. But again, this is by no means carved in stone. Anybody can use this in whatever fashion they find suitable for what their ideals and end goals are. But just knowing that this tool exists and how simply we can implement it into a preset to give us a lot of flexibility and control is a really great piece of knowledge to have. So there you have it, the Tilt EQ. I'm a lover of the Shelf EQ, as anybody who follows my channel knows, and as I've already mentioned, and I tend to use it just because I don't mind the extra little bit of tweaking I have to do to maybe set frequencies between low and high in different places possibly, which is one way I've used it before. But for those who wanna have a very simple way to just add a block in that allows them to either brighten up or darken up a tone in a bunch of different ways, depending on that center frequency, the Tilt EQ is an invaluable tool that some folks maybe were not aware of. It. A lot of folks are, and if you were and you've been using it, that's wonderful. You probably didn't get much out of this video, but for those who weren't aware of it, and I get this question so many times, and that's why I do a lot of these videos. Folks ask me, oh, this, this preset's too bright, this preset's too dark, how can I fix it up? And you know, there's a lot of answers to that, but I find one of the easiest ways to throw on a high or low shelf or throw on a Tilt EQ for an even simpler way and you can really tweak those sounds either mildly or aggressively and get much better results in seconds. So I hope that that was useful to some folks who are maybe weren't aware of that block or who were just afraid to try it out. And maybe that's gonna really help you to improve your presets. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use or enjoyment out of watching it. Also, please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for sharing your time with me. Ciao for now.